Hello. Hello. Industry. 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 Get yourself a custard and a custom. Here we are. In the in the home in you hear that, kids at home? The beautiful squeaky squeaks. <laughs> this is a home that, that's been lived in. We're here in the home of Joe. Do you have a middle name? James is my middle name. Joey James <laughs> Sorbera. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Thank you, and I should say the same. Industry tactics. We don't know the episode. We lost count a long time ago. Joe, <laughs> and, and it's very special with you. We're shooting her in 360. You get a good look at Joe's drum kit. If you're podcasting this, make sure you go back to the week before and listen and watch, actually, the 360 video of that. What is that, a Remo kit? Re no. No, that's a Remo head. We call that a head. <laughs> uh, what, 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 what is that kit there that we're looking at? You, you, want the, you want the gear talk? Well, yeah, just a bit of gear talk to that warm up the, the tactics. That drum set is the, is the only drum set I've ever owned, really. I have a practice kit now that I bought last okay. year, but that I bought in 1995. Yep. And at the time, there was a company in Calgary... I basically went to Long McQuaid here and said, I need a cheap drum set, but I want it to be really good. Okay. And the guy said, there's this company in Calgary who will send me the shells. Yeah. So just the wood. Shells are just the wood at home. The tubs, otherwise known as tubs. And, yeah. I'll, put, and I'll put the the guy at Long McQuaid at the time huh. said, I'll put the hardware on it. I'll buy Gretsch hardware, which is my favorite hardware, and I'll put the hardware on it. And so it was relatively cheap. Hardware is all that metal stuff. All the metal stuff. Okay, wow. Um, so I got this in, yeah, in 1995, so it's been around for a long time. Oh my god. Um, needless to say, Joe is a mad drummer from Toronto, originally from? Guelph. Guelph, and we'll get into that. Let's focus on this kit as our, as our, <laughs> as our intro here at Industry Tactics. What would you call that color? Is that a beige vanilla? What would you call that? What, what do they call that when they're uh, selling it to you at Long McQuaid in 1995? Maple. Oh, fucking yeah. <laughs> a white maple kit. And does it sound any better? Uh, what is this? 20, 20 some odd years later, does it sound better with it time? It sounds better, probably because I know what to do with it now. Yes. Ah, uh huh. Um, uh -huh. You I've, you get better with it. Yeah. The sound out of it. I've fumbled around with it over that time. Obviously, mm -hmm. I've changed things out, switched out hardware, bought this, bought that, moved this around. Um, so yeah, I think it sounds better than it ever did. Oh, also because Han Benning. Um, tuned my snare drum a couple months ago oh yeah and it sounds amazing and i don't want to touch it wow you know han no i don't know han han is um this like so this dutch uh i like him already free improv slash jazz drumming uh god essentially okay, okay. do you know misha mengelberg yeah, or sure. the icp so han is like that is like it was Misha and Han who were kind of oh, the ICP. Okay, of amazing, things. amazing, amazing. Um, so yeah, Han was here a few months ago with Eric Boren's band and borrowed. He played in this band just with a snare drum. That's oh, it. Yeah, yeah. And he used my drum and he tu he tuned it. I went upstairs afterward. I said, "How did you make that snare drum sound so good?" And he said, "I tuned it for you. It sounds good now." <laughs> That's amazing. So you shall never, you shall never. You're just gonna. Well, are you, what, well it'll go at it too. It'll, okay. it'll change. Like the weather will change it and yeah. stuff. But yeah. for now, it sounds great. And I'm yeah. Really, yeah. That's really great. That's really great. Great story. <laughs> he he kind of baptized it, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. The Dutch, eh? They're a very weird musical species, and that, especially notably that that ensemble, the Mengelberg Project. What did you call it? The M ICP, ICP Instant Composers Pool. That's good stuff. Yeah, that's good stuff. If you're listening at home, check that out. Um, okay, Joe, let's mm -hmm. focus here. We're in VR for the first twenty minutes of the podcast, and look, if you might, at home, the way he, the way he, look at his, look, his microphone. You would think he's a he's technique. a singer, eh? Look at technique. that technique. <laughs> We're, we're going to dip into all kinds of tactics. Um, um, actually, I don't know where it's going to go on the tactics side of things. Okay. You and I... I don't we know share if I have tactics. You do, Joe. <laughs> of course you do. I mean, here's a tactic. Look how good his hair looks. Look how good his hair looks. 
we're a sweaty day here. We're a sweaty, a sweaty day, day in Toronto in July in Toronto if we're placing this thing. <laughs> and uh, look how fresh you look. So that's a tactic right there. Horror tactics. What you... I've been I've been upstairs in the air conditioning playing with uh, with Michael Herring and Karen Ng today. That's what I was doing earlier today. You were upstairs in this very home? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a nice thought. That's a nice, two two weapons. Two musical weapons. Yeah, absolutely. And what's going on there musically with those two? Um What are you guys working on? Honestly, my family's been away for this is this is the second week. Oh wow! Okay, that I've been in my house by myself. So it and used I've to be had, a five piece, and now it's down to it's a, down to a one piece oh, for a couple so of weeks. And I've been having people over to play sessions like almost every day. Oh so, shit! Wow. Um, so Karen and Michael were here today. Oh, yeah. very nice. Yeah, very nice. I uh, would have loved to have heard that. That's, that's it's it's great. Yeah, we were playing like Ornette Coleman tunes and Paul Motion tunes and some Michael Herring tunes. It was really great. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And um, and and you you chose the air conditioning, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my, my kid's bedroom no. has an air conditioner okay. in the window okay. when we went upstairs. So there's another kit up there? Yeah, I bought my Damn. we bought I bought my daughter Raina a little drum set a couple of years ago. Okay. Um and you played that? And I played that. Oh yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Cerbera. <laughs> it would be nice to it, it would be nice to um to share your playing on that kit with the kids at home, but maybe maybe not. Maybe not. It's I up mean, to you. Yeah, you know. It, well, let's see where the let's see where it leads us. Because <laughs> okay. I was going to say, the, watching you play, and it is uh, is exciting. I'll I'll go back to maybe the first time I ever saw you perform. Yeah. Immediately in love. Can't remember where the hell it was. Oh, Might wow. have been a pickle juice thing that you used to do. You used to run the pickle juice orchestra. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I saw you go down on that drum, and give it a. <laughs> like you gave it a, a Zerbert, I guess. You yeah. farted on the on the drum, and I thought, yeah, that's a good man. This man, <laughs> this man, and I probably uh, see music the same way in a lot. In a lot, yeah. I, I don't know that huh. that stuck with me. I really liked. I loved your approach to the to the. I just, I loved your playing, but I really loved also the. Um, there was a like a humor there or uh you were you were messing around you were messing around with sound you were you were definitely from duck calls to like you were all over it you were really right. i don't know it just wasn't um it wasn't something i'd seen in in the city it, okay. in in music in Interesting. In, in, a, in, a, in a long while yeah, and I'm i a can't collector. place when that was i'm yeah. a collector so when i started getting into what like extended techniques okay and like seeing people do stuff on drum sets or with percussiony things or whatever just drummers do stuff yeah i would kind of i collected them all so some people kind of witness those things and go oh that's interesting yeah. but i tended to, to collect them so all those little sounds and all those little oh if you flick this that way or if you you know if you you can fart on your floor tom but then um whatever all that stuff i started to collect those things and then Okay, if you can do that, what happens if you do it this way, and what happens if you do this? So I've made a study of like the weird sounds, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What are What are your top three? <laughs> like just <laughs> right offhand, now? like just offhand that you've pulled that your your go tos when you're when you're. That well, I got you. really into I got really into um, what it was like to bow metal, right? So I bought a okay. I bought a bass bow, and uh, and started bowing cymbals and metal plates and all that kind of stuff symbols and metal plates okay yeah and mallets yeah like bowls and shite yep yeah. uh-huh um so what can you do with that and 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 what kind of stuff comes out from that and then um what else i guess a lot of it is about a lot of it is about making like long tones right you drums you hit them mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's it Oh, your microphone can't maybe deal with my. That was good. That was good. That was good. Did you feel that? Did you feel that? That was Joe's smack. So but we're into drums the make short sounds essentially, right? And so if you you don't have a long tone, and so I think a lot of it comes from looking for long tones. So bowing metal, bowing metal makes a long singing sound. Um, uh, all these things, um, you know, people will like grab vibrators and throw them on a drum because it just makes a. And yeah. that goes for however long you want. Yeah. So all this stuff to make it to make you know short sounding instruments long is a that's a. Speaking of short growing long, <laughs> have you ever gone to buy a vibrator? Yes. Oh, me and too. I had to. <laughs> and I had to test. I was like, I was so so. I went into this store. I went into a store in uh, in Yorkville. Okay. 
walk us through it. And because uh, I because I had seen um, I had seen Gino Robert. Yeah, remember that Robar. Right. Yeah. I had seen him do this thing, do some stuff with with uh, a vibrating toothbrush. Oh. oh. That's a and I was like, hygienic. if that works, yeah. if that works, I bet a proper vibrator is going to be, you know, b- much better. So I went into the store and, uh, and I said, I need to know what it sounds like. <laughs> and she, and the woman behind the counter was like, what are you talking about? And so I, and it was kind of my excuse for saying like, I'm not here for, not you here know, to, it's uh, not about, it's not about yeah, sex. Yeah, come right, on, right, come right, on. right. Um, it's all about sex. And so, and so, yeah, I like I like turned the thing on and touched it against the the counter and Amazing. checked out how it sounded and stuff. That and then must I was have been in such a perverted scene. <laughs> I think it was cool hey. for them to know yeah. that that's what I was using it for, right? Like, mm-hmm. like really, this is this is going to be a musical instrument, and who knows? Maybe I left, and they were like, "Yeah, right." But mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, so that's kind of fun. I like balloons. Balloons, beautiful. I like beautiful, um, and then and then I've got a I've got a thing. This might be the only thing I ever invented, which was which is yeah. vibrating a snare drum head with a trombone mouthpiece. Oh yeah, yeah. That so you can say that that is I'm like you've pretty, not seen that. Or, that's great. I've not seen that anywhere else. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Look in the corner if you can see it to the left of those weird things in in the on the shelf. Those are called CDs. But to the left of the CDs, kids. <laughs> He's got, what do you call that? What is that? Oh, the, the ugly stick. The ugly stick. Yeah. Very nice, Joe. Very nice. <laughs> so, okay. Let's keep focus. Um, you, uh, you grew up in Guelph. I did. It's Donkey Day. It, we just celebrated Donkey Day in Guelph. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, what was that like growing up in, in, in one of my favorite cities in the whole world? Would you agree that it's a beautiful place? Guelph was a great place. Yeah. yeah, it was a great place to grow up, and I'm and I'm uh, I'm kind of half back there because I'm teaching there. Yes, but um, I'm also glad that I don't live there. Okay. Um, okay. Interesting. I think I yeah. think that uh, no, like I'm I'm just I'm glad for the really glad for the community of people that I'm around right now, and I feel yeah. like yeah, it's a little That's small. Good. It's a little small there. You know, it's you. There are. There are a handful of musicians, and you play with those musicians because those yeah. are those are the people around. So right, right. Um, yeah, and especially at the time, like I left Guelph in nineteen ninety six. Maybe you want to go back before that, but I left sure. Guelph in nineteen ninety six to okay. come to go to York, and I just kind of stayed in Toronto. And that's where. So you went to York, uh, did an undergrad at York in in music, like in fine music. arts. Okay. Who did you study with at York? Who were, who were some of the the, the teachers you that you, that would have been around at York at that time? Yeah, so I started at, Phil in the, was that in the weirdo last... Phil? What was that weirdo's name? Phil, the guy on all the acid? Never mind, go on. Go on. <laughs> I don't fine. know Phil. It's I fine. don't know in acid elect- Phil. In the electronic music lab? No. Go on. I was a jazz guy, okay. right? So Okay, yes. Um so John Giddens was finishing up his reign as like jazz theory god of Toronto, I think. Okay. okay. Um, he was about to retire. John Giddens. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Who was an amazing pianist and uh, really had thought through a sort of theor like a jazz based theoretical model that was kind of the model that most. So like if you listen to Lauren Lofsky and Barry Elms and Al Henderson and all the kind of Whoa. the folks that went through that program. A generation or two older than me. Yes, that's all John's theory, I think. So, awesome. So John was there, but then, but then all those people were there teaching. So it was, yeah, I was like in workshops with Don Thompson and and Al Al Henderson and and Lauren Lofsky and uh, Phil Dwyer was there for a wow. bit. Wow. Casey Sokol was Casey there. Casey Sokol was there doing okay. all the foundation kind of thing. Okay. Steve Otto was there. Oh wow. Do you know wow. Steve Otto? That name's familiar. Why Steve would I know Otto his name? was this amazing guy. You would lo- you would have loved Steve Otto. Talk about a wizard. Yeah. Um he the best story I can tell about Steve was we're doing talking about the overtone series. Okay. And he's like this is this would be a typical thing. He's like if you want to hear the thirteenth partial. Love it. Go to the go to the Stong building, which is like on the other end of the campus. Stong. Go down to the basement, and and there's there's if you if you can get into the room, you have to get into the room. Yeah. But there's a red door. If you can get into the red door, there's a there's a you know um, 
there's a furnace there and if you put if you put your face on the floor Amazing. and your ear up against this one panel that's kind of pulled away the 13th partial of the of the 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 furnace noise is the most intense 13th partial I've ever heard like this guy seriously had gone around the campus specifically in search of overtones and like and had a catalog of them in his head. And this he could so direct beautiful. you. Like he, he was insane. So l let me just stop you there for a sec because I, f I feel like the listeners, the kids at home folks. So right. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a stab at, at the uh, at the overtones. Okay. The overtone what the overtone series? Sure. Okay. And it's gonna be wrong, so you're gonna have to just, just interrupt me when you can. But it starts out with Yo. Okay. And then it goes yo yo so every every sound when you fart it's a collection of different frequencies all all kind of bundled there that you only get the <laughs> but that 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 sound is a complex kind of sandwich full of what joe was referring to as all these all these overtones, so the different right. the different frequencies that pile up to make that one sound, yeah. Right, right. And let's not go over all what they all are, but they go way up to thirteen. Yeah, up to so, so the first inaudible. One, the first one is an octave higher than the root, right? Yeah, you know so this. Oh, uh, the first oh. one is an octave higher than the root. The second one is a fifth above that, and then it just oh. keeps going and going and going. So a scale, like an, yeah. an eight note scale, mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. first eight partials of whatever root, right? There it is. And you can all and, and and it's not and you know but then we yeah. get into what yes. equal temperament is. Oh, and, it's a, it's and, a beautiful and, thing. Yeah, thank it's, you, it's, thank it's you. Heavy. So this guy Otto, first name Kent, Steve. Steve Otto <laughs> was 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 bonkers into that. Like he was yeah. into the sandwich. Totally he was into, into every it. layer. He into also the had. He was also into like that's cool sonic healing. Like he believed that if you hurt, if you hurt your arm, yeah. he could like blast a certain pitch through your arm and that yeah. would like put it back in tune. And stuff. do you believe in that, Joe? I, that sure. I mean, you can cure constipation if you can cure constipation with a low rumble hair. It's like a twenty, what, two thousand hair. Can you do yeah. that? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can Have definitely you move a bowel. This? Um, no, but I mean, I've heard, I've heard. <laughs> okay. But I mean, it is a powerful thing, right? Like the sound cannon, yeah, yeah. all that. No, no, I think I that's know possible. About healing, believe in. I, I don't know, but yeah. Sure, I mean, is it possible? Sure. I'm into aloe vera. Like if I cut myself, <laughs> I'm not gonna play Stravinsky. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're at York. You're 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 you. Did you go into the furnace room at Stong? Uh, did I? Probably. I did actually. It, I did go and try and find one of them, and I had no idea what he was talking about. Were like, you hungry? You were, were you like what? What kind of student were you? Um, like in those early year. I was I was hungry, but I was also kind of frustrated. Like so activity. That, yes. Maybe we can. St so this maybe goes back to to Guelph proper, right? Okay. Um, so I started in. I started working in a professional like working jazz band when I was in grade nine. Okay. And it was uh, it was a fifteen piece band Holy and cow. a ten piece band and a nine piece band and an eight piece band and then and then down to like a duo which was me and the leader. Okay. And so I worked like I made more money in high school playing music than I think I ever have <laughs> as an adult. Sick. Because we were playing like during the school year we were playing two and three gigs a week and, and then your in parents the summer, were it was mad. Your parents were loving it, feeding it. Parents were amazing. Yeah. Cool. And great um, to hear. And the uh, and the leader of the band was a dick. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> you know. Awesome. So also, my awesome. parents trusted me to like hold my own with this oh. older asshole. So right? let's let's talk tactics. <laughs> Let me pause it right there. Keep yeah, the yeah, storyline yeah. going. Yeah, the dick mm -hmm. whose name we're gonna censor. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll say it later when we get off the VR in five <laughs> in two minute two minutes. Post time two minutes, and for those of you in the VR land, listen to the to podcast the Monday after this. Okay, you're gonna hear the name. It's gonna be bleeped out. Oh, these are distinct. These things. are distinguished. Okay? okay, so so now Joe. Yeah. 
the dick. <laughs> Did you learn a hell of a lot from him? Like, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's yeah. something there, eh? Yeah. The dicks, you learn a shit ton from. Yeah. Like, it's like, this is not how I define music. To spite him, right? Like, yeah. you're like, yes. he's like, you're no good. And I'm like, oh, yeah? Well, right? I think and there the was a whole reason. crew of us who did it's that. It's got to be the yeah. same reason why you, you would defy a parent. I kind of, I disagree yeah. with that. I'm going to go and mow lawns this Absolutely. summer or whatever the hell yeah. the decision is right yeah. I mean I think it's just to prove it I disagree with that it, it rubs me the wrong way this is how I define music what did he teach you the dick what were some of your takeaways oh man it was intense like he he, his thing was like playing like if you were playing a Duke Ellington piece you played it and it needed to feel like Duke Ellington and then we'd shift to Count Basie and it needed to feel like Count Basie okay so I mean really he taught me how to play drums like quite quite literally when I showed up in that band you know, the first day he was like, okay, so you, you go ding, 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 ding on the cymbal and you play your hi-hat on two and four. Like, that was, that was my first, like, I had no idea, right? Mm -hmm. And it, and it, and then it went from, like, how to lay back on the time and, it, and, and sort of play behind the beat a little bit and make it feel like Count Basie had to be light and up on it and make it feel like Duke Ellington. Mm -hmm. And then, and we did that. So we did that kind of stuff. We played jazz standards in mm -hmm. very traditional ways, but then also, like, later on, we were like, uh, we were playing a, an hour, two hour long concert mm -hmm. with a book of Miles Davis charts on our stand. And mm -hmm. it was like, he'd just go around and shift charts. So you'd be playing like a, an older kind of beboppy thing. And then you'd have to make, he'd be like, okay, now we're going to improvise our way to something from Bitches Brew. And mm -hmm. we'd have to find it. So... So I learned how to do that. Okay. We also, we played Inuit folk music in the style of Ornette Coleman. Okay, we so did all this crazy stuff. He sounds stuff. awesome. What makes him a dick? He was just a jerk. Like he, he was, was a jerk. A, he but, was abusive. But, he was, okay, yeah, yeah. But, musically, <laughs> but musically you were doing a music, shit ton of yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, fuck. Does that link back to that really shitty movie called uh, Whiplash? Man, that, yeah, absolutely. It, I mean, it wasn't that bad, but I mean, okay. yeah. I had, you were punching I had, snars? I had, I had stuff thrown at me. Fisting <laughs> snars? Yes. No, okay. no, no, no. No, never. Okay. I okay. had stuff. I had a watch thrown at me once. Oh, you know? God, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I can relate to that. And I think it, it, it is something like you, you probably were at a very top. I think it probably did great things for you musically out of the fear. Yeah. Um, I, you know, and, and you learned also a lot. Just like in spite of, like, you right. think I'm not good enough to do that? Okay, well, I'm going to up come. my game that little bit more. And, and there was, and again, there was a crew of us. There was a bunch of us doing it. Um, some of whom are still good friends with me, you know, and, and, and a lot of whom still play music. You still keep really in touch with him? With no, the no, I saw him a few years ago. And, okay, yeah. okay. Um, yeah, you really triggered something there. You're Italian, eh? Mm-hmm. Purebred? Or no, you, not yeah, okay. even a little bit, yeah. Okay. Not even a little? Probably an eighth or something. Okay. Yeah. But what I was getting at there is the motivated by motivated by spite that's a nice italian <laughs> tactic right there yeah, so they, yeah, they're definitely you know inspired by wanting to prove wrong <laughs> i think there's something there right it's really interesting hmm. hey who cares where you get the inspiration right we're driven yeah yeah okay yeah. uh goodbye at home you're ending yeah, this yeah we're gonna end the the uh, vr session okay.